the sanitary mask of the capitalist dictatorship. Talk with Miguel Amoros about the pandemic in Toka to wife Yuga 12 12 2020 in your texts about it, you stress the fact that the coronavirus crisis has meant one more turn of the nut of state social control on the screw of capitalist developmentalism. You say that we are participating as a massive maneuver in a dress rehearsal to defend the dominant order against a global crisis, a process apparently triggered by the pandemic that could have been triggered by any other among the many harmful effects of the growth society infinite. Could you expand that perspective a bit? The pandemic exists, and we know that its lethality is low, that it is treatable by the usual means, and that the rate of infections evolves in a similar way to other respiratory infectious diseases such as influenza. On the other hand, surprisingly, nobody seems to be alarmed by the death toll in the world from cancer, hunger, pollution, diabetes, heart attacks, tuberculosis, malaria, AIDS, hepatitis, suicides, or traffic accidents. So, if so much ailment has never forced exceptional measures such as the mask, distance, tracking, curfew or confinement, what is the medical basis that justifies them in the case of COVID-19? Associated security issues? It does not appear to be the case. The virus simply evidenced the poor state of public health and care for the elderly, saturating hospitals and funeral homes. The disproportionate reaction on the part of the government is due to a shock strategy that takes advantage of an alleged sector crisis to introduce involutive changes. The regimes that entertain themselves with democratic formalisms are known to be weak to face a critical situation with public debates and they opt for medicalization, that is, to face it as if it were a serious medical problem that can only be solved with emergency measures that go beyond the medicine. To impose it, they resort to fear. Thanks to unilateral communication, it has been possible to spread a psychosis with horrible results for coexistence, but excellent for the authoritarian model enthroned by the state of alarm. What are the true causes for you? They are of various types. First, a combination of ignorance, inertia, and government fear of counterproductive measures. Second, the general crisis of the capitalist way of life, the dark side of the unsustainable industrialization of living. Overcrowding, hyperactivity, hypermobility, the destruction of territory, after the habitats of animal species, industrial food, pollution and a very deficient system of sanitary protection are the true culprits of the pandemic. Capitalism has peaked and has become totally unhealthy. Third, the digital reconversion of all planetary activity. What do you mean when you talk about a clash of contradictory dominant interests? Among the planetary elites there are huge differences on how to avert the global crisis, or to put it more current, the economic pandemic. Some confess their concern about climate change or the fate of refugees and are in favor of a world government maintaining democratic paraphernalia and green capitalism. The others deny the importance of global warming and raise barriers against immigration. They are in favor of a nationalist castling, of a Chinese model of state, and of a colorless developmentalism. You speak of managing the catastrophe and re-articulating the mega-machine. Of a great advance in depth and extension of the substitution of the social state by the police state. Dismantling of public health medicalization and even greater growth of the power of multinational pharmaceutical companies. Of health dictatorship. Power, the mega machine, is being reconfigured at the state, financial and technological level, and if in the medical field this is manifested in the expansion of the private health industry and the advance of the large chemical pharmaceutical corporations, in the administrative terrain is equivalent to a development of the police area and a regression in politics. Today we can speak of a dictatorship legitimized by supposed health emergencies whose causes attributed to a fearsome microscopic enemy from which only the vaccines of the multinationals can save us. You describe great progress of alienation, social digitization, the undisputed empire of the spectacular lie, catastrophism, the rule of fear, manipulated statistics, interested scientific studies, displacement of sovereignty at increasingly uncontrollable instances technical management of surplus population. 
the rapid changes produced since the beginning of the year by restrictive measures have considerably altered social relations and further increased the pressure on the surplus population, people excluded from the labor market, who are increasingly costly to attend. A submissive and hysterical mentality, incapable of reasoning, prone to blind obedience and denunciation, typical of totalitarian systems, has also spread in certain conformist sectors. Digitization, subordinate media, bribe science and the omnipresent police are the tools of this extreme form of alienation, due to which the governed willingly surrender their nominal sovereignty to the state, and to the higher instances that determine their decisions. Are these changes in the world regime of domination and exploitation, then, irreversible? Is what used to be called democracy over? Is there a qualitative leap in the globalization of the market and its interweaving with the technological system? What do you see coming? Power can no longer turn back. All the changes to come will point in the same direction, that of barbarism. What they say democracy, and it is not, to the extent that it responds to the qualitatively authoritarian leap of globalization, will visibly be what was already in essence, a mildly coup dictatorship and technologically well equipped. Conspiranoia and enalism, leftist collaborationism, slavish submission and declared dependence of the population, deepening of the work consumption cycle, surrender to the dictates of the leaders, unconditional obedience. Galleries of the same labyrinth. Vertical information, generalized lies, leading demagoguery and its poisoned fruits, fake news, jeek denial and conspiracy obsession, are in fact, together with voluntary servitude, disciplinary control and heightened consumerism, the main characteristics of the current panorama. Real perspectives of resistance and self-defense. The deep distrust of the masses in the face of improvised vaccines, the relaxed non-compliance with the imposed measures, the indignation of health personnel, the dissent among researchers and the installation of urbanites in the villages, are symptoms that submission to the imperatives of survival metropolitan is not general and far from automatic. The credibility of those who govern us is not at its best and their ability to maneuver is rather limited. There is. However, an active civil alternative that leads to the radical transformation of the way of life, that is, the exit from capitalism. It must be clear that it is necessary for society to govern itself. Disobedience, which is already abundant, protest, which is not in short supply, autonomy and a taste for the truth, almost absent, are only the first steps of a possible revolt that reinvents health, care, education transportation, urban planning, daily life, administration, politics, 